young, successful, but more often mentally ill. Young people that are suffering from a burnout or depression. Over the last 10 years, I experienced eight cases only in my personal environment. Young people between the age of, between the age of 30 and 45 that I would never expect it, they'd end up in such a situation. Situations that, in best case, they recovered from within three months, in worst case, only after a year or longer. Besides that, most of them won't be able again to live a life without medication. So I'm wondering, what are the reasons that under more or less the same circumstances, one person suffers from a burnout or depression, while the other person remains completely unaffected. What can we do to prevent these kind of illnesses at a very early stage? What is the impact of our lifestyle, the importance of our DNA, and the influence of our genes? It's not a secret that, biologically, we age from our 30 on. No chance to stop this process yet, right? So, I ask myself, how will my 10 to 20 last years look like? Will I be fit enough to spend quality time with my family? Strong enough to embrace, to enjoy every single moment? Will I grow old with vitality or at the end, will I get old with disease? There are so many questions, but it's about time to decide. So today, after this session, I would like you to remember three important things. First of all, our genes are definitely not our destiny. Second, we decide how we age because we hold the extra time of vitality in our own hands. And third, Proactive prevention starts with a genetic analysis. So first of all, you must know, neither a doctor nor a gerontologist. I'm just fascinated about the idea of managing my health and the aging process on my own. It all started exactly 10 years ago, November 2010. It's been quite an intensive time at work and I urgently needed a break. Well, three hard-earned weeks and I really wanted to get the maximum out of it. So I found this fantastic resort, beautiful environment in the south of Spain, in Andalusia. Can imagine you're already dreaming about nice bodegas, delicious tapas, vino tinto, right? Well, maybe I should have mentioned I'm talking about fasting clinics. You know, fasting clinics, these kind of places, they serve you soup and juice and tea all day long. I can literally imagine your bubble bursting. And I still remember my families and friends that declared me completely crazy. Three weeks of fasting, 21 days of soup and juice only. And then again, for a hell of the money, are you completely nuts? Vacation is the best time of the year. You should enjoy this time. You should not be disciplined at all. Well, of course, I didn't listen and I went there. And after 21 days, I knew exactly why. These three weeks felt like a complete reset of my system. I lost a lot of physical, mental and emotional baggage. More than that, I started from scratch again with a completely different attitude. I've been shining from the inside. Did not only feel younger, I also looked younger. No, my skin like baby skin. However, by the time, I did not really understand the big picture yet. Could not really join the dots. Why my genes would matter, that I might have prevented the development of certain disease or even slowed down the aging process. Anyway, slowing down the aging process, how crazy does that sound? Don't we all grow up with beliefs like, this is genetic predisposition, this is inherited. After all, we own 50% of our mothers 50% of our father's genetic information. More than 25,000 genes 
stored in every cell of our body. And yes, it's true. Our gene sequence remains the same throughout an entire lifetime. But our genes only contribute 30% to the development of disease and the aging process, only 30%. 70% is influenced by the way we handle our genes, by our lifestyle. So listen, people out there, 70% that we are responsible for. I think that's really good news. It's a great opportunity because that means that it's not our genes that control us, it's us that control the genes. So it's, it's only 17 years ago that research thought they'll make the big breakthrough. They've been in the process of cracking the genetic code. And it's been their perception that knowing everything knowing the entire genetic material, they would know everything about a person, find the solution for all the problems. And yes, indeed, they succeeded in decoding the human genome. However, yes, they succeeded. But they realized that the 25,000 genes that they found could not explain human life in all its facets they realize that human characteristics cannot be described by the genetic material inherited. So why is that? Gonna have a look at the gene sequence on which the entire genetic material is encoded. But guess what? Only 2%, 2% of the human genome contains the code for the production of proteins. Almost 98% consists of non-coding DNA. Non-coding DNA designated as junk DNA for a very long time. Today we know that it's exactly this non-coding DNA that matters and that is one of the most exciting fields of research. Because this non-coding DNA forms the so-called epigenome, the totality of genes that describe the, modifi the epigenetic modifications of a cell. So epigenetics, what exactly does that mean? Epi originates in ancient Greeks and means as much as on top of. So epigenetic means on top of or next to the genes. Additional information, additional structure that the cell programs. And based on this program, the cell knows which genes it can use or cannot use. And due to the permanent interaction of the cell with its environment, the cell reacts on environmental influences by switching either genes on or off. So imagine it as a software update that implements or deactivates certain features. But your computer, a PC or a Mac, remains the same. So exactly the same with the cells. Although certain genes are switched on or off, Although they are switched on or off, the genetic code itself remains untouched. So, and to give you an idea what this actually means and how much food alone can have an epigenetic effect, I would like to tell you a little story. It's about bees. And listen very well, because it's really amazing. Did you know that bee larvae are all born with the same DNA? And yet, some of them become queens, while others become workers. Why is that? I'm gonna tell you the secret. It's all about feeding the larvae. Bee larvae fed royal jelly throughout their entire larval development, systematically develops into queens. Various larvae that only receives pollen or honey just become workers. And the reason for that is that in the worker bee, certain gene sections are switched off due to the so-called epigenetic markers. In the queen, these sections remain active thanks to royal jelly feeding. So isn't that amazing? And as with the bee, the environment can also control genes in human. So time to have a look at the elements that have an influence and gene regulation. And therefore, I would like to take you to a nice virtual trip to Japan, to Okinawa Island as Okinawa Island is known as the island of the supercentenarians. 
the number of 100 years old in Okinawa three times higher than elsewhere. So let's have a look at the elements of their lifestyle. There are five major elements. First of all, nutrition. They follow a plant-based diet. They eat a lot of greens, beans and nuts, drink green tea, eat a high protein tofu, only a small amount of meat. And they follow the principle of hara hachibu. Sounds funny? Just a simple idea of eating until you're 80% full. Second, daily physical activity. You know, do not subscribe to a gym, pump iron or run a marathon. They live in an environment that constantly nudges them into moving without even thinking about it. They grow gardens and they do their house and yard work without major mechanical conveniences. So in a way they're just fit by nature. Third, strong sense of community, belongingness and social commitment. People in Okinawa put their families first. They meet with families and friends every day. And in Okinawa, by the way, there is not such a thing than retirement. By the way, did you know that after birth, the second most crucial point in our lifespan is the moment we retire? Because people that retire often lose their purpose. So not such a thing in Okinawa. People are passionate about what they are doing all their lives. So they do not even hesitate to start new businesses, not not in their 40s or 50s, even in their 1780s or in their 90s. Amazing, right? Fourth, mindfulness and the avoidance of stress. You know, they downshift by routines that shed stress like yoga, meditation or even karate on a daily basis. And last but not least, only a little exposure to environmental toxins. Okinawa is situ situated in a quite rural landscape, so People there profit from fresh and clean air and they do not have the toxins like in mainly industrial areas. Well, here ends already our nice virtual trip to Japan. And yes, of course, it's pretty obvious that we cannot compare life here in Switzerland with the lifestyle of the people in Okinawa. That's not the idea. The idea is creating awareness of implementing a healthy, a positive lifestyle that is in line with our genetic predispositions. It is in line with our personal risks so that we can actively manage them. Imagine twins, identical twins. As in the course of their lives, they go through different experiences, develop different habits and find themselves very often in different life circumstances. Their epigenetic code clearly develops in a different direction. Although identical twins are genetically identical and although both of them have, for example, the pattern for diabetes, only one of the twins, in our case the right, the overweight twin, only one of the twin effectively develops diabetes. So what do we learn from that? We learn there's not such a thing than good or bad genes and not Every risk automatically develops a disease. It's up to us to influence these risks and to behave in such a way that protective genes are active and genes that risk the development of certain disease are more likely to remain switched off. So now you're probably asking how you can learn more about your risks. Here's what I did. First of all, I really made up a clear mind and I took a clear and conscious decision pro-genetic analysis. In a second step, I consulted an expert that I could trust, that I could rely on. And based, or in this first consultation, I got to know everything about the process and the possibilities of a genetic analysis. Afterwards, blood samplings have been taken to process the genetic analysis, as well as an extended laboratory diagnostics. In addition to that, I wrote down all the details of my lifestyle and I documented all the risks that I could find about my family. My grandparents, my parents, brothers and sisters, also my aunts and uncles and my cousins. And based on that, after about six weeks, I received the results of my genetic analysis. An entire documentation, a detailed explanation and evaluation 
of my genetic predispositions, my personal risks in relation to my lifestyle. And I can tell you, I'm really happy about the insights that I gained based on the genetic analysis. And yes, it's true, not only sunshine and roses, there are some risks. But to have it written black on white really makes a difference because it allows me to focus on certain elements. It even motivates me to change my lifestyle and to ensure that the existing risks remain risks and do not become disease. And so you can do as well, so no more time to lose. Clock is ticking, tick tack, tick tack, mine as well for the 18 minutes. So I hope that over the last 16 minutes, I could steer up your curiosity for this exciting field of epigenetics. I could create awareness why understanding epigenetics is so essential for our health and the aging process. Because first of all, we are more than just the sum of our genes. Our genes are definitely not our destiny. Because second, we decide how we age. Because it's us that control the genes. And third, only if we know our personal risks, we can actively pursue prevention. So, just do it. Live active and healthy. Thank you.